Maps have been a core feature of iPhone since the very first device shipped way back in 2007, and the underlying framework has been available to developers for almost as long. It's called MapKit, and like UIKit, it's available for us to use in SwiftUI if we don't mind putting in some additional work. And yes, that does mean coordinators. Let's start off with something simple and work our way up. Make a new SwiftUI view called MapView, then add an import for MapKit at the top. This time we're not going to use the protocol UI view controller representable, because MapKit doesn't use view controllers. A classic way of building software is called MVC, which splits our code into three types of object. Model, our data, view, our layouts, and controller, glue code that connects model and view. Apple uses MVC in UIKit and its other frameworks, including MapKit, but adds a fun twist. View controllers. Are they views? Controllers, both, or neither. Apple doesn't really answer that for us, which is why you'll see a hundred variations of MVC in iOS app development. When I teach UIKit, I start by explaining to folks that a view is one piece of layout, such as some text, a button, or an image. And a view controller is one screen of content. As you progress through your UIKit knowledge, you learn that really you can have many view controllers on one screen, but it's a helpful mental model while you're learning. All this matters because when we used UI Image Picker Controller, it was designed to work as one full screen of information. We didn't try to add functionality to it because it was designed to work as one self contained unit. In contrast, MapKit gives us MK Map View. And as you can tell from the name, this is a view, not a controller, which means it just shows content we provide to it. This is why we don't use UI View Controller representable when working with MapKit. MK Map View uses a view and so we need to use UI view representable instead. Helpfully, this works almost identically. We need to write methods called make UI view and update UI view to handle instantiating a map view and updating it as our Swift UI state changes. However, that update method is much more important for views than view controllers, because there's a lot more crosstalk between Swift UI code and UI view objects. Whereas we left that method empty for view controllers, you'll be using it a lot for views. We'll come back to updating soon, but for now we'll use another empty method. As for the make method, this will make a new MK map view and send it back. We'll be adding more to this soon, but you've had enough chat for now and I'm sure you're keen to get moving. Replace your current map view struct with this. First, we'll make it conform to UI view representable. Then we'll add a method called make UI view, context, UI view, representable, context. Map view returns MK map view. Let map view equals MK map view return map view. Then func update UI view underscore view MK map view context UI view representable context map view and then empty. Before we move on, I want to show you a teensy bit of Swift magic. Back in project 13, when I introduced you to the UI view controller representable protocol, we used type alias just briefly. This is Swift's way of letting us create new names for existing types, which is usually done to make them easier to remember. Well, both UI view controller representable and UI view representable both include type aliases built into them. If you right click on UI view representable and choose jump to definition, you'll see the generated interface for Swift UI and it should show you this line inside the UI view representable protocol. Type alias context equals UI view representable context self. That creates a new type alias, a type name called context. And wherever Swift sees context in code, it'll consider it the same as UI view representable context self, where self is whatever type we're working with. In practical terms, this means we can just write context rather than UI view representable context map view, and they mean exactly the same thing. Anyway, we've built the first version of our map view so we can go ahead and use it. Go back to contentview.swift and replace the text view with this. Map view dot edges ignoring safe area dot all. Xcode doesn't do a great job of previewing map views right now, so I suggest you run the app in the simulator to see how it looks. You should find you can tap and drag the map around, but if you hold down the option key, you'll see a second virtual finger appear so you can pinch and rotate freely. 
not bad for only a handful of lines of code. Of course, what you really want to do is bring the map to life with some place marks, so we'll tackle that next.